I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast for the health of it. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. What we're going to talk about today is causes of fatigue and sleepiness. Why are you so tired all the time? I've been seeing patients, you know, including my schooling years, my, my, my residency, probably about 40 years. And so many patients come in and they say, Dr. Joe, what can I take because I'm tired all the time. Well, there are several things you can take, several supplements I take. We're gonna talk about them, but I wanna talk about getting to the cause of your problem and not just treating the symptoms. If you're new to the show, you know I'm really big on treating the cause of healthcare problems, whether it's neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, digestive issues, fatigue. So we're gonna talk about some of the causes and then some things you can take as well. They work really well, and most of you are gonna be really happy at the end of today's show. You're gonna go, wow, that's all it takes? Yeah, it's all it takes. And by the way, it's a lot cheaper than drinking coffee, which is kind of cool too. So of course, the biggest one we have to look at is not enough sleep. It seems obvious that you're getting too little sleep, but it can negatively affect your concentration, your health. In fact, I just saw a study this morning that said it can affect how you walk. And that's a safety issue. And they talked about walking, but all movements, driving a car, walking, you could fall down stairs, you're more likely to have injuries, more likely to have workers' comp injuries, car accidents. So fatigue is a real serious thing. It's not just, hey, I'm tired. You're affecting my health because you're affecting your health. And if you and I are driving on the same road, that eh, can be a problem. I don't want that happening. So make sleep a priority, and you got to make it a regular schedule. And I was talking with Dr. Kat, who's several years younger than me, and she was saying, too, she's one of my doctors, and uh, she was saying that, you know, how when she was younger, I, I'll party all night, go into the clubs, and now it's like, you know, 9 o'clock, we're getting ready for bed. That's okay. You don't have to be out partying every night your whole life. And if you do, chances are you're probably taking some stimulants, many of them illegal, uh, that you shouldn't be taking. So it's okay to go to bed early. It's okay to get a good night's sleep. It's really kind of fun. So you want to be careful to try to ban laptops. Uh, laptops give off blue light, and that can affect your sleep. Um, cell phones, of course, as you go into bed. And also there's something called electromagnetic frequencies. EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, are put out by things like your wireless, your cell phone, uh, even clock radios. And you can get a meter. How was it called? A gross, gross, gross meter? G-R-O-S? G-R-U-S-S? Anyway, it's a meter. You can actually get an app for it on your phone. And you can measure electromagnetic frequencies in your – just look up electromagnetic frequency app. And you can measure how much electromagnetic frequency there is in your, in your room, and you'd be amazed. I remember years ago when this first came out – I actually still had a clock radio – and there was an app you can get, and you, I just put it next to my clock radio. It just went nuts. So now what I do is I, t I use my phone, like everybody else, as, a, as an alarm clock, put it far away on the other side of the room, as far away as you possibly can, even in another room if you can hear it, and just get it out of there. Try to shut off your Wi-Fi. You'd be amazed how many people are having trouble sleeping because their Wi-Fi is on. You can get a little uh, timer, like for a Christmas tree. You can get it for like 8 bucks in Walmart, and you just set it to turn on and turn off your Wi-Fi. Turn it off at whatever, 10, 11 o'clock. Turn it back on at 5 or 6 o'clock. Amazing. So many people have gotten better sleep simply by shutting off their Wi-Fi. How cool is that? So it's, there's other things we're going to talk about today, but that might be something you never even thought about. And it scares me when people fall asleep with their phone in bed with them. Because that electromagnetic frequency right next to your head is not a good thing. There's a lot of studies out on it. Uh, before COVID, it was kind of making a lot of new noise. Now, a lot of things have been pushed to the wayside. Hopefully, it's going to start making noise again in, in the media. And so just start thinking about that. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So what? I tell people at all the time. I did a consultation yesterday with a patient, and she said the same thing. She goes, well, I have fibroids, and I have a parathyroid issue, and I've got back pain, I've got neck pain, and what can I take to fix this? And I said, well, it's not just what you take. It's what you don't take. I say, if you've got tumors growing in your body, fibroids, you really want to cut out caffeine and you want to cut out estrogen-containing foods like meats and dairy products because estrogen is a growth hormone. Yeah, but what can I take? I said, well, you could take super greens and essential source and vitamin D and digestive enzymes and women's hormone support. Okay. I said, are you willing to, to change your diet? 
well, I'm just going to take the pills and see what happens. She's not going to get the results she wants. I'll sell her the pills. I mean, it'll help a little bit. But ultimately, we always want to get to the cause of the problem and not just treat the symptoms. And the same thing with sleep. So sleep apnea, that's a biggie. And what that means is you briefly stop breathing throughout the night. And that wakes you up for a moment. And you may not even be aware of it. And then you drift back to sleep. Uh, My father, when he was alive, had a big belly on him. And it turns out it was a liver issue. And I was very young at the time. I don't remember it. What, you know, I did, couldn't diagnose it then. But his liver was swollen. And so that became a big issue. And that's why he had this big gut. But the big gut was pushing up against his diaphragm, or pushing up against his stomach, which pushed up against his diaphragm. And he would actually stop breathing at night. And then he'd, and he'd gasp himself back to sleep, back, back awake. And we would ask him the next day. He didn't remember any of it. So if you have a big gut, that could be a problem. If it's fat, well, we got to lose weight. If it's a liver issue, we got to detoxify your liver. So we always want to try to get to the cause of the problem. Now, sometimes what they'll do is they'll put you on what's called a CPAP, and it's oxygen, basically. And they're just pumping oxygen up your nose and sometimes in a whole mask, and that's supposed to help you sleep. Well, if you ever tried sleeping with a mask on that's connected to a tube, eh, it's not the easiest thing to do. And a lot of people just give up on it after a few nights and say the heck with it. Also, the CPAP, because you're breathing and it, can get uh, uh, infected. You can get a uh, buildup of viruses, germs, bacteria in there. So again, it's treating the symptom, but it's not getting to the cause. So oftentimes with, in fact, every case I've ever seen in 40 years now, uh, if you have sleep apnea, your stomach is pushing up against your diaphragm. And so my team of doctors are all trained by me to gently pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, physically move it down. And in many cases that helps with acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, because you're not digesting your foods, but then it allows the diaphragm to start moving up and down. And that's sucking air in, blowing air out. Many times that solves the sleep apnea issue. The problem is physical, not chemical. And so often in healthcare, we try to treat things chemically, what can I take, as opposed to what can I do to solve the problem. And that's really important when it comes to healthcare. I want you to get that. You want to get to the cause of the problem not just treat the symptoms in any healthcare problem, if it's doable, of course. So if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, uh, chances are the stomach is up against the diaphragm and chances are, not always, but chances are we can pull the stomach away from the diaphragm and physically move the stomach away. You also want to check the fourth cervical vertebrae. That is the, where the nerve called the phrenic nerve comes out of the spine. Phrenic nerve controls your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is a muscle that goes up and down and pumps air in and out, kind of like a bellows. And... You want to make sure that if you have a pinched nerve in your neck, it's not affecting the diaphragmatic movement. I've had that happen many times with patients after a car accident. The seatbelt holds your neck, body in, but nothing holds your neck in. And your neck snaps back and forth in a car accident, all car accidents, even minor ones. And many times the fourth cervical, which is the center of the neck, the curve in your neck, is the one that's affected. That can affect the, the, the phrenic nerve, which can affect the diaphragmatic movement, which can affect your breathing issues, which can affect sleep apnea, which can affect your brain not getting enough oxygen, which can cause you to be tired during the day. Who would have thought that car accident that you got in 30 years ago is still lingering and can affect your sleep? It really can. And that's why so many times when it comes to healthcare, your problem is a physical issue, not a chemical issue. And I don't know of many, in fact, the only doctors I know of that address it are doctors of chiropractic. They could go in there, check the bones if they're out of place, put the bones back in place, open up the nerve supply, address the physical problem, not just the chemical. Now, in our office, we also do nutrition evaluations on every one of our patients. In fact, I was at my radio studio uh, yesterday, and four different people stopped me with health questions. Uh, one of my bosses, she was flying. She wanted to know what supplements she can take to keep herself healthy. Another gal uh, was eating donuts, and she was. Con- and somebody said, "Oh, you should talk to Doctor Joe about that." And so we talked about a supplement called Jim Nema, which can help stabilize blood sugar and help get rid of sugar cravings. Uh, and then other people stop me all the time with questions. So it's a topic that we all have concerns of. We all have headaches. We all have neck pain. We all have back pain. We all have uh, sleep issues. We all have digestive issues at some point. And many times there is an answer to the question, and you just uh, don't know who to ask. Well. That's why you ask me. So if you have a health question, you can send it to us through the website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. We have over 20, I think 2,000 hours of podcasts on the website, audio and visual. So you could listen, watch. Uh, there's a little bot that pops up on the website and it says, got a question or you want to chat? 
Send us your questions. I'm more than happy to answer your questions for you. Joe, my producer, and I were more than happy to answer your questions. We try to get back to you as quickly as possible. So if we don't get back to you instantaneously, it just means that we're not sitting at a computer monitoring the website. We will get back to you as soon as we can. That's why you put your email address in there. See how cool that is? Check your spam. Because every now and then I'll send a question and somebody will say, I sent you a question three days ago. You didn't get back to me. You said you were going to get back to me. And I said, check your spam folder. And their computer filtered it out. So always check your spam before you, you know, act. Uh, I had a doctor one time. And uh, I, we, I, he was a good doctor. But he gave me some great advice. And, you know, people always talk about what advice did you get in your life. And some advice, this is great advice, information without emotion. I love that advice. I'm going off topic here for a second. But information without emotion. Find out all the information before you make a decision. All of us have made snap judgments only to find out that we were wrong. And so think about that, information without emotion. How can I get all the information before I say, all right, you know what, this person is wrong or this person didn't do what they said we're going to do. Maybe they did, and it's my fault. So always consider information without emotion. Anyway, I digress. Sleep apnea, get your stomach fixed, get the fourth cervical fixed. We have a, a 21-day weight loss protocol that we have. It's on the website, drjoe.com. Just type in 21-day weight loss. And it's a whole protocol uh, for 21 days. It's supplements, it's food, it's meal planning. And just for 21 days, we kind of reboot your brain. You got to reset the brain for all the junk you're eating. And if you can do that, I think you'll be pretty blown away. And then you're able to make better decisions. Because sometimes, I used to be fat. Sometimes it's really hard to make decisions because you love your donuts and then you rationalize. Well, I'm going to go for a walk today if I eat that donut. You can't outrun your fork. Let me say that again. You can't outrun your fork. So no matter how much you work out, diet is about 80% of your nutrition protocol and your health protocol, including your weight loss protocol. 20% is exercise. So think about that next time you want to make a decision. Do the 21-day protocol. You really need to kind of reset your brain. You can make better decisions. Other reasons why you're so tired. I'm going off on tangents here today. Not getting enough fuel and not necessarily eat, not eating enough food, eating the wrong foods. So you want to make sure you eat a lot of fiber in your diet. Fiber takes the food and pushes it through your colon and you get a slow release of energy throughout the day. And then at night, you don't get this big rush of energy. If you're going to eat ice cream before you go to bed, your sugar is going to spike. Sugar is fuel for the cells. We don't want to fuel the cells. We want the cells to start to calm down, kind of, you know, a power down at night. So think about what you're eating. If you eat food in the morning, it's going to have a less caloric impact on you than if you eat food at night. So if I eat 100 calories of food in the morning, it's not going to put on the same amount of weight than if I eat 100 calorie food at night, the nighttime is worse. So at night, try not to eat these big heavy meals. I went out the other day uh, with my friend Tim. We had Thai food. And there's a Thai food restaurant in Marietta, Georgia that I just love. And I got the ginger tofu. And they gave me a big bowl of rice, of course. So I ate very little of the rice. Because the vegetables, the tofu, no big deal. It's not going to really spike my blood sugar that much. But the rice certainly will. It's like eating white sugar. So try to think about what you're eating at night. And try to put those, those quick fuel energies, the carbohydrates, um, put them aside for your dinner meals. Uh, of course, salad would be a great thing at night. One of the problems with eating things like salad or soup at night, it's a lot of water. Why is that a problem? Well, as you get older, you can't hold your urine like you used to. And so you might have to get up and pee, which can interrupt your sleep cycle, of course. So try to think about what you're eating and see how you feel. And that's such great advice. Most people never correlate with what they're eating with how they feel. On our website, drjoe.com, if you go to patient forms, I think it's under clinics and then patient forms. There's something called a diet diary. You can print this up. It's absolutely free. I, I, don't, I, I have no way of knowing if you're printing it or not. And print it up and just start writing down everything you eat. Everything. If you take a piece of gum, if you take a sip of soda, write it down. It's only for you to see. And then notice how you feel. I had to do this and I found out that caffeine gives me headaches. Even a little bit. And I'd negotiate with myself. Well, if I just have a little sip of tea, if I have just a small piece of organic dark chocolate, well, that's negotiating with yourself because I still got a headache. So I realized I can't do any caffeine. I can't cheat. I get a headache. So you can find out a lot of your health issues just by simply writing down what you're eating. And you'll say, wow, every time I have artificial sweetener, I get anxious or I get a headache or I get uh, nauseous or um, every time I drink alcohol, I can't sleep right. So 
You can write it down and figure it out, make a lot of decisions on your own. So the key here is always eat quality foods. Always eat quality foods. And that's the hardest thing I think we have in our society when it comes to eating. Because it's very tempting to eat alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. Very tempting. But once you understand a simple thing, ask yourself this question. Is it worth it? Is it worth eating this food if I'm going to feel horrible? If it's going to be unhealthy for me, short term and long term? Is it worth it? And if the answer is no, don't eat it. It's very simple. So you know the bad foods, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. If it fits into those categories, it's never worth it. It's just that simple. So you got to say, no, I wouldn't do this. Dr. Joe wouldn't eat this. I shouldn't eat it either. I had somebody joking one time, and they said, we're going to make up bracelets. They said, WWJD, what would Joe do? I thought, there you go. That's maybe sacrilegious. But <laughs> what would Joe do? So if I won't eat it, you shouldn't eat it. It's just that simple. So think about that every time you eat. It also takes a lot of energy to digest food. In fact, if you eat a piece of meat, it takes about six hours to get the meat from your stomach to your small intestine. If you eat fruit, it takes about half hour, something like a cantaloupe, 20 minutes to a half hour from your stomach to your small intestine. So if you're eating cantaloupe and a steak, the steak's going to sit there for six hours. The cantaloupe is going to be digested in about a half hour, and eventually that sugar is going to start to ferment and rot. And when it rots, it gives off gases. So many times, if you're bloated all the time, it's your food combining. You got to get the food moving along so like foods stay together. But don't mix heavy proteins like meat with a simple, easy-to-digest carbohydrate like a fruit. Not a good choice. And that can cause a lot of bloating and gas. And once again, if you write down everything you eat, you'll say, okay, I went to a buffet, and I had some roast beef, and I had some potatoes, and I had some uh, corn on the cob, and then I had some dessert. And you're wondering why you're so bloated and gassy and can't sleep, and your breath stinks. It's because you food combined in a poor way. So just something to consider about that. Other things. That can prevent you from uh, getting the proper rest and feeling tired all the time. How about pain? Pain is a biggie. Most of us roll around at night. We toss and turn. Why? We start getting uncomfortable. We move to a different position. So if you have pain, what's the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain or any body pain, really? In most cases, most effective, least expensive, chiropractic care. So if you have neck pain, the back pain, hip pain, leg pain, sleeping pain, come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. There's no reason why you should be suffering in most cases. Not all. But a major majority of our patients are thrilled when they come see us. I was talking to a, a, a fellow down at the radio station, and his name is Rick, and he said it was probably the most dramatic change I ever had in my life. The most dramatic thing I ever did was getting adjusted. Dr. Cat saw him up in our Duluth office. And he said, it was life-changing. He says, I suffered for so many years, and he's in his early 60s now. I suffered all my life. He says, and it held. I feel great now. He says, I still go back and get tune-ups. He says, but it was amazing. I wish I had done this sooner. And I hear that every single day. So if you want to make an appointment, come see us. And who's a good patient? Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, digestive issues, nutritional issues, uh, pretty much overall health. You can make an appointment right online, drjoe.com. Now, we have a special running through the end of the year. Uh, normally, the first visit is $720. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, complete re going over the x-rays, a complete nutrition evaluation, first treatment. We've reduced that to $299. And we want to get you guys healthy through the end of the year. So if you're ready to do it, go to the website, drjoe.com. You can book it right online. You can call us. We're more than happy to get you appointments booked. We'll answer any questions. We accept almost every insurance out there. Uh, also, car accidents. Here's the thing with car accidents. If you're in a car accident, if the car is damaged, you're damaged. That's my experience. I've never seen it any other way. You are not stronger than your car. So if the car is damaged, you, and you absorb that impact and the transfer of energy, you are hurt. So just stop suffering. Get healthy. Get ready for the new year. Get ready for Christmas. Get ready for your birthday. Get ready for Fourth of July. Whatever it is, whatever going to motivate you, just do it. Like the Olita Adams song many years ago said, I don't care how you get here, just get here. Stop suffering needlessly. It breaks my heart when patients suffer. 
And all they got to do is make an appointment in most cases. DrJoe.com, you can book it right online. Hopefully, we'll see you very soon for that. So pain is a big issue. It keeps you from sleeping, of course. And many times you toss and turn because you just can't get comfortable. You may not come totally awake, but you are. And how do you know you're tossing and turning? Well, I mean, you could do a sleep study with cameras. Are your sheets all twisted? Are you getting wrapped up in your sheets at night? Are your, 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 your uh, night, night clothes all twisted around? Are your pillows all over the room? Those are signs that you're tossing and turning. If you're snoring, if you're snoring, you're not getting oxygen. Many times that's sleep apnea. Many times that's the stomach pushed up against the diaphragm. So most of these things are pretty easy to fix. So I don't know why you're not coming to see us. I really don't understand it. If you are coming to see us, you're very smart. Good move. Low iron, anemia can cause you to not get enough oxygen, which can be an issue. So if women are during childbearing years, they could be losing blood on a a monthly basis. Uh, That can be an issue. Red blood cells are needed because they carry oxygen. So if you have anemia by iron, if you have iron deficiency, taking iron supplements may not always be your best choice. And the reason is a lot of the iron supplements are very constipating. And that can cause another issue. You're not passing out waste products. That becomes a problem. It can cause bloating. It can cause cramping. It can cause bad breath. uh, Mood swings if your bowels aren't moving properly. So I suggest you do plant-based iron. Now, what's a plant-based iron? Well, anything that's green or anything that's red out there in the plant kingdom is usually going to be pretty high in iron. Darker green, darker red, the better. So strawberries, cherries, rhubarb. I know who eats rhubarb. Uh, Red beans, anything like that. Even quinoa, red quinoa. Those are usually good sources of iron. Nuts are good sources of iron. And the reason I like that is all those have fiber in them, and that's going to help keep the bowels moving properly. So it's really important that you consider um, getting the iron in your body. Now, if you're a man, if you're uh, through menopause, you can build up too much iron in the body. And that can be very dangerous and actually increase your risk of heart disease. So what I do is I donate blood every chance I can. Was it nine weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is? They always send me an email. Hey, come give us blood again. And I don't mind. It takes me about a half hour, 45 minutes to donate the blood. And this way I make sure that I keep my iron levels in check. Because too much iron can be more dangerous than too little iron. And so that's why as a man, uh, if postmenopausal women too, should probably donate blood as often as they can. It's good for you. It's good for whoever receives it. The Red Cross sells it, makes a profit on you. I know they kind of laugh at that. It's like, oh, we need you to volunteer and donate blood. Oh, donating it to you, you're going to sell it. Boy, that's an easy, easy way to harvest uh, new products, right? Just take it out of other people. Listen, I don't care about that. I care that I'm giving somebody my blood. And whoever gets my blood, I always figure is going to score big. So I always wonder how many people out there got healthy because they got healthy blood for the first time in their lives, maybe. It's kind of cool. So things to consider. We're talking today about why are you tired all the time. If you're deficient in B12, vitamin B12, that can create something called pernicious anemia. The blood, red blood cells are too small. And so that can become an issue as well. And if you're a vegan, it becomes a issue. I suggest that everybody take supplements, of course, but especially if you're vegan, make sure you're getting B12 supplements because you get that from, actually, from rotten meat is where it comes from, actually, from meat that's been bro- broken down by bacteria. I joke about rotten meat. Uh, but the minimum supplements everybody should be taking every day, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders, minimum supplements you should take every day, and it's a great source of plant-based iron. And vitamins, minerals, nutrients, it's, it's, once you start taking it after a couple of days, you go, oh my God, why did I, why did I not take this in the past? This stuff's amazing. So Super Green is an essential source. They're on the website, drjoe.com. Drjoe.com is a website. Social media, follow us at Dr. Joe Esposito. Make an appointment, drjoe.com. We'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on WSBRadio.com and on the WSB Radio app.